Hey guys, uh, welcome to something slightly different. Um, so, one viewer asked for a showcase of the fighter that we were using in the campaign, so I thought I'd uh, go through and get that done. Turning off. Sort of. I, I have been meaning to release some um, construction episodes where we worked on this a bunch, so people would have an idea of what's in it, but I just I haven't had time to get around to it. Turns out it took quite a while to work on this each time, so yeah, it might take a little while for me to get all of that edited on the side. Um, so what we've got at the moment is we have variable thrusters set up to ramp up for 5 seconds at 250 thrust per second. Um, they're basically sort of chase missiles due to the fact they do take 5 seconds to ramp up in time but have two fuel tanks on them. Um, so initially the boosters will give them the initial boost of speed, then thrusters will be on bare minimum for a while just to sort of keep it going and let it turn, aim itself at the target, then build up speed. Um, two sets of fins and target prediction guidance to make sure they hit. Uh, active radar seeker runs off the front of the nose of the ship and three explosive warheads just to give it that extra punch. Now she has eight of those. Um, that she runs at a time. Boosters are back here. Missile ejectors. Really? The surface here a little bit more visible. Um, yeah, so we got those four boosters, uh, boosters on either side. There, English. Um, yeah, so those... Those are pretty much combined with the... Like, combined with the speed of the vehicle, used to give it most of its punch. Um, they were set up, I believe... Uh, the arming time was set up on them. Um, not worried about that. Yeah, the arming delay is 0.8. Um, it used to, this used to be able to be used up in a higher atmosphere, and it used to be able to get up to like a few hundred meters per second, and you just nosedive straight down, launch it out with the ejectors, and these missiles would just punch holes into things. Um, but at the same time, they are pretty useful in dogfights. Alright, so on top of that we've got two anti-missile flares um, at the back here, so they're pretty simply set up. Just fins, an APN guidance, sticky flare, and a missile interceptor. Um, now I believe we had... Did we have ejectors on this? I thought we did. But it would appear there aren't actually ejectors on them. But yeah. Um, so basically, what goes down is, yeah, they're set up with, they should be right around here. Um, there's a missile controller, there we are, automated control block. Um, so yeah, they're just really simply set up. Once they detect a hostile missile within 200 meters, then it'll fire the missiles. Um, it has a control range of two, just to make sure that it can reach across to that block. It considers itself a block. So if you want to control a block that's next to it, you need to make it 2. Um, if you want to put a control block that's diagonal to it, you need to put it to 3. So, yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, up here. Yeah, so we've got ion thruster on the top and the bottom um, for the nose. We've got, I believe we've got ion thrusters for roll. Yeah, at the back. Here. Um, so most of the weight is condensed in the back here, so this is where it sort of rotates on its axis whenever it's trying to roll or pitch up and pitch down and so forth. Um, as you should be able to see, she rolls fairly well. Um, pitches up and down fairly well. Now, the whole idea behind having a couple of ion thrusters is, yeah, she can escape up into upper atmosphere if she needs to. And so if the fight's going poorly, um, yeah, there's definitely a way to get out of it. Now, yeah, at the front here we have an active radar. Shrink all the blocks down, and I'll also get rid of that, because it actually makes it hard to see. Now you can fairly easily see inside. Um, yeah, we've got one raw resource storage block at the front there. Um, that was back when it actually just used to run on one. And that was the only one in the ship for a while. But I kind of changed that up. Um, yeah, so an active radar seeker 
just AI physical connector and an AI, AI wireless receiver. Bleh. Um, the reason for that is just to try and tuck that AI receiver a little bit further in. Um, so we've got that extra block there and it also makes it blush on the front here. You can't see inside the nose. Whereas if I put the, um, connector for the radar straight onto the back of that, yeah, you'd, you'd pretty much be able to see in, I believe. So be a bit weird. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there's no real reason for having that extra block there. So it doesn't need to be done. Got a bit of ammo running straight down here. We've got fuel kind of just stashed in here for the moment. It needs a little bit more put into it, I believe, from memory. Um, but it's fine. We can get around to that eventually. So we've also got, yeah, we're back to fuel-based engines. Um, we'll run through run, run through building this in the construction episode, but for the moment. All I've got is a fairly simple setup. We've only got six cylinders, eight carbs, eight superchargers, and eight turbochargers. And the idea behind this is whether it's sort of just chilling out and sort of slightly running, it's fuel efficient. Then when you do take it up to higher revs, it's not eating through like 10 fuel a second. Um, well, actually just running through <laughs> almost that. Uh, but yeah, it is much more efficient than it otherwise would have been. Now at the same time we've got a couple of different outputs set up. So what we've got is we've got our hang on, let me let me do something different. Uh only important uh that'll take away the engines. Alright, hang on. Let me get back around to view no structural. Alright. So, yeah, what we've got is here we'd have our two um, hull pipes. There we go. Sorry, forgot the name. Yeah, so we've got a hull pipe here, hull pipe here. Um, I believe we've got another hull pipe at the top, yeah, in the center there. Um, so the idea is we do have three separate outputs just to make sure that there's not too much um, exhaust being pumped through a single set of exhaust pipes. Um, the reason for this was at one point it was kind of overheating. So we've got yeah a turbocharger running straight down, feeding through with a yeah standard connection here. Now I believe we've actually still got space to put stuff here. So we could even put more superchargers on it, to be honest, but it's not really necessary. So I was thinking of putting maybe more fuel or something in it. Um yeah, so it's identical on either side. It does also take an extra out, extra output from the turbocharger there. All of that feeds out this way. Then at the top is where we're running the um, alternate supercharger setup, feeding it straight back and up and yeah, Bob your uncle out through the drop. So it's a fairly simple setup. We've got a couple of ammunition processes stacked in there. It's just five I believe those are the only ones, as she doesn't really need to produce too much ammunition at a time, and as it stands, it doesn't carry very much resources with it. Now, it, it was meant to be sort of an escort sort of fighter, where this thing sticks to something that does carry a bunch of resources with it, and keeps stocking up throughout the fight. Um, but I found it's just such an effective interceptor that I just can't help but keep using it. Um, so yeah, we've got a couple of uh, what should we call them? The repair, repair bots, um, chilling out in there as well. So it can repair itself up if it needs to, um, but only if it doesn't get sort of outright blown up immediately. Um, yeah, so we got the missiles just run straight down the wings, as you can see. We've got a couple of connectors and stuff. We've got the. Is that an extra launch pad? No, that's the origin block. Okay, yeah. That's right, I had the origin block set up there originally so that it could attach um, onto the sides of a larger ship that I had running at the time. And they'd sort of dock up onto the sides of it and then launch straight off of it and get into battle. Um, yeah, three large fuel based thrusters. Um, we got a couple of ion thrusts for forwards, but not a great deal. Um, but yeah, that should be pretty much be everything on board in terms of parts, I believe. 
Um, yeah, and of course we've got the chair and stuff stashed. Hang on. Um, yeah, so we've got a chair and stuff stashed way down in here. And the idea is, as long as you put a, um, like if, as long as you put a block occupying the space you're in and either side of it, the nearest space will be the top of the ship that you can actually occupy. So if you try and jump out of the ship, you'll actually just slide up and out of the ship. Um, there is also a parachute here, I believe. Was it? Oh no, that's the repair bot upside down. Okay, I did have a parachute in here at one stage, but I don't remember what's happened to it at this stage. Um, so yeah, we got an AI in there. We've got one thing actually I do need to quickly do. I might quickly do it here if I can. What I need to change now, distance below which we have bought the attack run. Alright, sure. Let's try that out. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. Alright, so now we'll get on to actually showing it do some fighting. Um, if I can get everything back. Alright, so when we do get into the campaign as well, any little tiny changes like that can immediately be uh, put into the fighters. Um, yeah, as all we gotta do is hit one button and it should immediately update the fighter. There we go, that should be a bunch of stuff. Okay, hopefully they don't collide with each other. One of them already collided with something. Oh well. So there you go, that's the first barrage of missiles. Um, <laughs> they still did not do what I asked them to do, so I'm not sure what I've done to change that. I might have to have a look around in the fighter and double check for a lure block and make sure that I don't have something overriding the AI um, for control of that, because she shouldn't be trying to fly up close. She should be getting within a certain distance, turning off and coming back for another attack run. I don't like the idea of getting that close. Uh, this one, it looked like it just took a hit, but I don't know, I guess it was fine. There's been no repairs done. But as I said before, these things should be fine to take on an airship. Like, on their own, I shouldn't have to touch a thing. They should be able to take on a bunch of these airships, a bunch of these other, I guess, fighters slash... I don't know, whatever else. And come out on top. Um, but for some reason... Cool, that one took a hit. Um, yeah, for some reason I've absolutely had problems with, yeah, them just flying at these things and trying to do pass -bys. Then I'm just sort of getting within a range and turning back around. I do need them to do. Um, it is one of the ways that they were set up as you could see from the old settings they were meant to come in within 50 meters and immediately spin around, run off and come back again. Um, whoops, I need to jump into that. So I'm going to need to fiddle with that a bit more to get it running exactly right but um, I might just quickly pause the recording and come back to it once I've sort of got an idea of where that setting is that I've changed. So, yeah, I'll catch you soon. Alright, so I uh, mucked around with it a bunch. I actually can't find why it's doing this. I've even completely replaced the AI. There isn't any little box in there. I don't know why it's actually getting too close and refusing to turn off. I may have to fiddle with it some more later. not clear yet. This is what the chase missiles are built for. It should ramp up enough to catch it on the turn. Oh. 
It'll stick around for a while too, just in a second. Yeah. They start making impact. They should start slowing it down. So it is meant to sort of deal with things like specifically this. Anything that sort of relies on guns and gluing itself to you, um, this fighter should be pretty damn good at. As it's built more of a built in more of a bomber type design than you would expect for a fighter. Um, it's due to the fact that it runs on the missiles, but they're all chase missiles. Now, I mean, I probably should increase the um, maximum thrust of these missiles once we do start running into fighters like this, of course, as they can end up, you know, not actually catching it in time. But, so I'll be. Um, I don't remember 100% if I've set up the inter vehicle communication stuff yet. I believe I have. Now, if so, it means, yeah, like, the more of these fighters there are out in the fight, the more effective they become. So, they can all track for each other's missiles. At that point, the missiles won't really miss as they're turning off. See, at times like this, the fighter doesn't actually have detection. So, having it glue itself to the ship like this is actually fairly difficult. It can curve off, and so forth. But, any time a ship's trying to do that to escape, yeah when the next set of missiles get you. You can see there's already a hole in the front of it. It's not really going to be able to do much. Um, at this point it's basically just bullying. So... Bring a couple of them out. Get them to dogfight together, I guess. I have no idea where those extra ones are spawning. Ah, there. Over that way. Now, once they're in packs, though, it could be a bit more difficult. But those are fairly tough fighters, the ones that we're up against right now, in terms of they're heavily armored. And if they do get some shots in on you, they can do some damage. But, these fighters should be set up well enough to take them on still. This is supposed to sort of be their job. Uh, deal with this, and originally, I actually built this to be, admittedly, an absolute piece of crap. Um, it was meant to cost nothing. It it was a bit simpler back then, um, but at the same time, yeah, this design originally came about to fight the Atlas retrofit. It was just meant to be a cheap little quick design that could stay away from its guns and just continuously harry it with missiles until it falls down. Back then, I think they were actually slightly cheaper than they are right now. Um, but they weren't as well set up. They didn't have as much firepower. And yeah. Fairly effective. Should be a good little demonstration, I guess, of what they're good at. So yeah, it shouldn't really matter um, how many of them they're necessarily up against. The second they start crippling them, they're fine. And they've got the speed to stay out of the way of their guns. And once they're stuck on the rear of a vehicle like this, like, it's going to stay on the retreat, um, because its AI is pretty much set up to do so. So it's going to keep running and running, because it's not really set up to be able to quickly spin around and turn those guns on something. It'll end up colliding, so it can't really be set up that way. So it's the first set of missiles it's set off in a while. Ooh, I got a good hit in too. And vice versa. Now that fighter should be able to come over and pick this one up. Or it'll pick itself up, you know. Oh wait, no it might have been doing so, I might have had the... I can't remember if it still shows the effect without that on. But yeah, say lobby. Fairly effective. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Uh, I just sort of... Give it like a first person view. Actually, no, we'll just restart the design and we'll have like a fresh dogfight with them. Alright. Um, load that up. Let's 
see how we go. Whoa! <laughs> Facing the wrong direction there. Whoops. Okay. That's a bit wobbly. But I mean. Yeah. Probably best off to just watch from a distance. <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, there was quite a few missiles thrown at it. It's nimble enough that it just tries to dodge around them. Um, and the fact that it's got that little bit of wobble in it as it flies is intentional. Uh, the concept behind that is if it's got quick firing AA guns spraying at it, they're now going to be spraying in sort of an arc in front of it rather than straight up spraying in a continuous stream directly ahead of where it's going. So it's going to be really hard for them to actually land those shots despite having really quick firing bullets because it's just going to be overcompensating up and down, up and down, up and down due to the, I guess, uh, wobble in the ship. So it does throw off aiming quite a bit. Um, the further away they are, the more effective it is. Which is why they're good at sort of doing stuff like this and kind of get in there, gang up on one or two of them and sort of separate them off by chasing them and forcing them into retreat and the others can't really do too much to back them up they can launch missiles, but their guns themselves shouldn't really be able to hit at that range. And as long as these are being forced to keep running away, the others can't catch up. They're moving at the same pace until those thrusters are broken. And these things are set up fairly tough, to be perfectly honest. I do quite like them, honestly. They're pretty good little ships. But, uh, yeah. Well, it's fairly effective at what it does, and, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed, sort of, Watching it do its thing a bit, and um, so seeing how it was set up, but yeah, its original concept was just to try and take down the big airship, and um, it was just meant to be really cheap and effective, and it was exactly that. So much so that I kind of, I just kept using it, and um, I do have, I guess, I could probably show off one last thing. I guess. Why has it stopped itself? It should be fully functioning. I think it's low on power, maybe. Hang on. Yeah, it's power's way low. That's why. Hasn't charged up. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was, this was meant to be sort of for laughs. But... It'll, uh... It'll launch a few missiles. <laughs> Quite a few missiles sort of what it's set up to do. Um, this one is pretty much, it's not too different from the fighters. Um, it's with a lot of missiles in the front. It's pretty much all missiles in the front. Once it does get charged up though, I believe it was feeding its power off to the fighters or something like that. I believe maybe what was going down there. But yeah, once it does charge up, it gets going pretty good. Um, it'd run really well with fuel engines though. And yeah, it's pretty effective. It <laughs> shoots a lot of missiles off. Alright, so that thing's getting slammed. But yeah, um, sort of be fun to sort of watch it do its thing. Unfortunately, it's gone pretty much like immediately into degraded mode. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. They're not very big missiles. They weren't really meant to be. They were just sort of meant to be in an absolute cluster of missiles thrown out. Um, yeah. It's pretty fun. I've actually got another design that does do this, like a similar thing in terms of harrying missiles out in large volumes. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might end up bringing it into the campaign at some point, but yeah. For now, I think that's it, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.